Okay, um, I'd like to introduce Lothar Goetz, who uh, is a painter and part-time uh, lecturer in the fine art department. Um, and half, half lives in London, half lives up here. Yeah. And um, anyway, I shall turn the lights out. Yeah. Over to you. Yeah, hi. Um, I have selected a kind of work range which I wanted to show you, which focuses on one bit of my practice. I'm, as Kate said, I'm a, I'm a painter, but not in the, in the complete traditional way that I always would paint on canvas and always on boards or always on, on, on supports. But uh, lots of my practice was, was involved with space, with architectural space, with communal, I mean with communal space, with public space, um, and came out of an interest in architecture, and there is specifically architecture from, uh, let's say, starting from, from, from the Bauhaus, from the modernist period. There are different, different variations. I, I, I um, should probably there as well say a bit about my my history i mean i i'm i'm german i was i was born in bavaria uh, and grew up there and there um one i think later i realized one big influence of my for, for myself and my work and my my ideas of color in space were baroque churches so i was quite influenced by by baroque i mean we had a I mean, we grew up in a small town um, nobody knows the town. It's called Gunzburg. It's outside of Munich, uh, and but it had an amazing Baroque church. And only later I realized, I mean, how much from the from the color scheme and the way how Baroque architecture deals with space and incorporates the viewer into that whole flow of 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 of, of, of spirit and space and um, had an influence of, on myself. Um, I did then start to study first. Design. I did my first degree in design. Uh, changed then. Did then realized that that is not the complete right thing. Or I wanted to work more free. I didn't want to. I mean, I just realized that uh, advertising agency wasn't the right thing for me. Um, went then into and studied aesthetics. Went into a bit into a theory, and then realized there no, it is really art that is the thing I want to do. Um, but I my work probably was quite influenced by design ideas and by architecture and all this around. So, so when I then later, I mean, I studied then, in Bo I studied first in Aachen, I did the, my design degree there, basically equivalent to the BA here, then did my MA uh, in Wuppertal at the university where I studied aesthetics, uh, went then to the Kunstakademie in Dusseldorf, uh, did there, I mean, in Germany, it's very different when you study art, you study with a professor, not, not like here with a subject area, and there are people who use very, very different materials. Uh, th there's a complete mix of, of printmakers, sculptures. People might use <laughs> different materials like, like glass, steel, paint, um, uh, but there the, a common thing was this interest in architecture. Uh, and then after that, I didn't finish there. I went to the Royal College. Uh, and did in London and did painting where I was a kind of outsider because there it was, I mean, outsider or let's say at the edge of painting uh, and I struggled quite a while, I mean, to define where am I and where is that actually placed, then denied or, or kind of um, uh, felt for a while, oh, no, I am not a painter. It was a constant question going on. I mean, you will probably, that with glass is probably a same thing as well, where you think, am I a glass? Is it, is it glass? Is my material, is my practice about that? Or is it some, is the idea more important? Uh, for me, that was as well a bit because because of the Royal College, it was very kind of for me very traditional, and very much focused and divided the subject areas uh, into painting. I mean, I was at the time really the only person who did not paint on a canvas, uh, and that was a complete different perspective from what I looked at my work. Uh, I then, uh, and this is where the where where, where the slides start. Because of the interest in architecture and in, in space, I started painting on walls. 
and then of course it was one obvious thing was to use public spaces and to use uh, I mean and and to find spaces to respond to <coughs> I had then a very particular I mean interest for a while in in <coughs> spaces which had a specific use um, I mean like hospitals libraries uh, as well <coughs> outdoor spaces or or um, Private spaces, and there—I mean, really a private space. I mean, like, like, like the bedroom or the or the kitchen, or which is not the classic art space. Uh, I later then developed a drawing practice, and I show this. I just hand that round. I mean, you can in that light probably it's possible. Just have a look at that. It's a new publication. Uh, just to give you an idea what I do actually in the studio and when I do drawings uh, because I show no example of that work in the in my presentation um, and ha had then these two strengths um, yeah this is now I mean the first slide is around probably three or four four years after I graduated at the at the Royal College uh, and it was a time where I did quite focus on public art pieces uh, and, and that was probably about around five years a period where I got completely I mean, sucked into that and did that and that was my main practice and as I said later at the moment it's kind of 50-50 drawing uh, and as well drawing on a bigger scale which is then now seen as a painting again <coughs> and, the, and the public art, I mean the, the spaces, the wall pieces. This is um, an installation I did. I do sit down now, I'm sorry, I had a knee operation quite a few weeks ago and uh, uh, I have still a big problem standing long. So, excuse me, oh, sorry about that. Um, uh, this, is, this is an installation I did. Uh, uh, it was uh, uh, one of these open exhibitions you can apply to. It was in Gillingham uh, and they, uh, but because of my nature of my practice, they they asked me then what do you want to do, and I decided to use the the, the library um, to do a very simple intervention where I used colors which are in which I f which was out of their wayfinding system. How do, how you I mean how they organize the books like like pink probably for history, green for fiction, or, or so on, and did a very simple um, installation. I mean, in most of the, the, the projects I'm showing now, and I mean, I will not repeat that then to with, with, with every single one because it, it, it would be the same. It was uh, an important thing for, for me was to uh, go into a space and really design something for a space. And the work itself was for me not just what I did put in, but the whole environment. Like here for me, the interaction between the books, the light, <coughs> and these lines, and as well that, that 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 visitor or that viewer experience that you might sit down somewhere and you search for books, and probably like here when when in that example you sit somewhere, and then suddenly probably after ten minutes you realize there are a few lines, uh, and it was as well quite challenges there, the boundaries, where does where does the art, uh, the space for art or the abstract space start and where where is the space of your normal interactions and that that coming together or juxtaposition between an abstract idea, a very clean idea about uh, a purist space brought into a space which is possibly exactly the opposite, uh, that did interest me a lot in this project. I mean, here as well, then I always I enjoy these color interactions because I mean, in a space like this, immediately I think when you really look and you focus on the color, you see as well the color of like the t-shirt from the boy in a different way or the colors of the book. I mean, they or the, or the orange of the video sign. That is one uh, project I did. Um, uh, for Gasworks, it was an exhibition and organized by Gasworks Gallery in London. And um, in the gallery, I designed, I, I, I designed a wall painting which did fit exactly the space of the gallery. It was six stripes, one going, I mean, dividing the space completely symmetrical, one, three stripes going from the middle to the left, the other one to the right, and then filling the space and then meeting up at the other end. I didn't bring a slide of that one, uh, but what was 
happening beforehand was that I did exactly the same painting which I designed for that space in different environments, like in I did it in a church, I did it in, <coughs> in a derelict house, I did it in a flat, in two different flats of different architectural characters. This is in a modernist flat in Brixton, uh, where the aesthetic went quite well together. And then patchwork it basically or collaged it into that space because there was no wall where the actual measurements would have fitted because the, the color and the, the amount of stripes, the amount of paint, let's say, I mean, I think these, these let's take the yellow stripe, they had a fixed length, they had a fixed width. Um, and that was, I think it was around 11 meters by 110 or so. Uh, but then I had to, like, if you would lay out a paper, I had to cut it because that wall was probably only four meters long, and then another bit of that yellow was in a different place. Uh, and it, it was a very simple idea where I was interested how exactly the same colors and, and around the same shape is seen in a very different context. Uh, I mean, w is seen in a different context and is getting uh, getting influenced and experienced by us in a in a way which is different. I mean, how d how is a pink, for instance, like that color? They're becoming. Uh, what is that in a domestic space? Like in a if it's in a bedroom, if it's in a kitchen, or I just continue there. That was in a that was in in that other flat, that the kitchen. Uh, do we see that as an abstract painting? Let's say, I mean, talk about uh, uh, the, the 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 history of the of the of the black square from Malevich. Do we see that in a context like this, or does it become just just sheer decoration? And how do we respond to that? And as well, I mean, color is something which was always a very important instrument for me it was a very important thing I mean how we what, what color does to us I mean color interactions to see uh, how, how how do we perceive colors in different environments let's just show now a few slides and and there of course it is as well it's becoming something like a either a background or a stage set or <coughs> or interacts, of course, as well with the colors which are there, like there with the with the blue cushions or that 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 glittery curtain. That that is all what was in that space. Another um, installation in a public setting in a church in Boat Church, uh, where <coughs> they wanted a site specific piece, and um, I struggled a bit at first to find what I should do. I wanted a wall painting, but then I said, well, it's, I found it quite inappropriate there, I mean, to paint these, these, these walls, and then came up with the idea to do <coughs> a, a color work, I mean, kind of geometric work, which out of lines or stripes, which is becoming an element they can, they, they can use in the church, because it was, it, I mean, the church was used as an exhibition space, but still they had as well, it was a working church where they had a sermon, they had congregations every weekend. Uh, <coughs> so the show was open till Thursday till Sunday, and then every Thursday these cushions were laid out like that, what it is now, uh, and then they could get changed. And on, uh, I mean, I wanted then to create a piece as well, like in, in the empty space, I mean, in the, in the, condition like this is an exhibition now you could see the piece and then when you imagine this place now filled and for for some other activity the art piece basically disappears <coughs> that is um, one example of uh, of, of a work uh, I did for um, um, a housing trust I did several projects uh, together with Look Ahead, which is a which is a housing trust in in, in London. For th this is a, this is a place for um, uh, the communal area of a space where uh, people live who have been homeless and it's their first kind of sheltered living um, back into getting getting back into a normal life or normal or, or in a or in a life of having a flat or getting back in a job, <coughs> and we we did that. Um, project which involved, I mean, I did at that time quite a few public art, uh, I mean, communal art or public art projects which were uh, where, where it was not just about the aesthetic result, <coughs> but as well the whole whole experience. So so here with the with the residents, they were, we, we, we did workshops and they were involved in, in, in some kind of dis decision making <coughs> um, and we, I, d I did trips with them to to spaces which could inspire them, and then in the end, 
I did uh, a color concept for their communal area. It's another piece from that from that from that time. It's in it's in Derbyshire, in in uh, Ashbury, and our people's restroom, which was which is sitting in the middle of the of the market square, and was at the time when I got asked to participate there from the Derbyshire Arts Trust in a in a in. <coughs> In a, it was a kind of organized exhibition or arts project um, that was quite derelict. It was beige and brown and nearly falling apart. And then I um, proposed that, that we do as, 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 the, as my piece of refurbishment of that space and found the original architect as well. He was still alive. He was in his 80s already. It was his first student project. It was meant as a temporary project, but then was still there. <coughs> and uh, uh, talked about his ideas, and uh, he was very inspired at the time about modernism and and kind of developments then in the in the 50s and 60s about. And I then, out of the whole collaboration and talks, I developed a very simple geometric painting, <coughs> which was basic. This is just another image. I just go there, which was in the inside of that space layered over that s rectangular space um, and was a very simple um, color field painting which that and was divided I mean I mean by by the half lines I mean I mean half I mean I mean the the, the dividing line was exactly halfway between uh, the floor and, and ceiling and did bleed out out of the windows and this made then the Basically, the uh, the dividing lines and the the colours of the of the uh, the windows and the doors, <coughs> and it, it was then in and, and I mean the whole I mean the floor and everything the restoration was part part of it. It's quite an exciting project because it was very much in the public. It caused from some local residents quite outrage. Um, it made even whatever the the headlines in the main news <coughs> because the, it was sponsored by the arts council and then there were uh, it was particularly i mean it is the 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 the, the, the town is a typical um, town where which had this problem that it became a second home city for city city brokers basically and they all wanted that that old people's restroom basically out <coughs> and wanted a Starbucks coffee or something in. They didn't say that, of course, and then complained bitterly that these colors would be insulting to old people, and old people should have brown and grays, and not, and this would be disrespectful, and then, <laughs> then, then we came a whole debate, and then it was a, whatever, a whole session of asking old people, and they were very happy with it. I mean, it was mainly old ladies going there, refreshing their lipstick, or be between, uh, or, or someone reading a, a magazine <coughs> during their shop. Uh, but <coughs> I mean, this is one of these things, of course. Of I mean, when you work in a public domain, which is very different, where you are, in a, where you have contact with with people, where you are, uh, where you're not in this bubble world of of uh, of the gallery, where you basically never ever get in touch, or very rarely with people who probably uh, are very critical about that. Or yeah. But so so it was uh, it was interesting in that case. Another uh, project, an outside project, it's a museum in, in Germany, Museum Goch, with straightforward wall painting around a, a corner, which I did outside uh, during, I mean, I had a solo show in, inside about drawings, but that was a site-specific piece which they commissioned, which is still there. Uh, <coughs> I mean, lots of these projects I'm showing here, they are, um, they are temporarily, I mean, they're, they're, they are meant as a temporary in, uh, intervention and <coughs> and have a lifetime. I mean, it's paint, so you know it's not lasting forever. But I, and some are only really for six weeks. Uh, but this is, I think, still there. One project I did at Piccadilly Underground Station with platform for art. <coughs> um, I mean, again, in these within these public art projects. <coughs> I mean, Kate knows that very well. <laughs> I think it's you. You. Uh, you have. One one challenge is you 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 usually get at first your brief or you get your restrictions and then sometimes you read them and then at the end I sometimes have that moment where I think literally I can't do anything I mean <laughs> it's not possible 
and then you have to start to get to this moment where you probably start uh, just ignoring it now. Uh, and then you start with something, but then I sometimes find these restrictions as well interesting in that because they, you might end up with different ideas when you allow them basically or you use them creatively. I mean, here it is quite clear we, the size we were, rest I mean, you had to work with these flat surfaces of the um, of these old, I mean, there's glass behind that, there were the, the old uh, dis display windows, uh, and you could only work with this vinyl, something I've <coughs> I, I ha haven't done before, that was my first project with that. Uh, and then I tried, yeah, just to, just to use the given structure and, and do something with that, and, and, and sometimes you come up with new ideas. It's a little bit like, like when you work in a collaboration with architects, and then it's a very different process to work either, I mean, when I work on my own in the studio, or if you work with a group of people, and people have other ideas, and then you make decisions as a, as a group. When did you do this one? Uh, this was 2006, around around 2006. And that was up for around three months. That was a, <coughs> a poster project. <coughs> I mean, that was, again, something, I mean, they, they invited 100 artists to do a drawing relating, it was for the 100th centenary of the uh, London Underground, and they invited people to do a print for, an, which then got auctioned, and I mean, a lot of these kind of works or projects, they often ask you as well to do something, and then they, they pay the project, or, or it's, it's for charity. Here it was as well, you donated that drawing, and you, you had to respond, there was a brief responding to the, to, to the round. Um, a terribly, the, the exhibition was then really terribly exciting. I mean, I really love all these different, I mean, for different <coughs> practices and different different artists these uh, uh, responses and what they actually did with it uh, with the round uh, and then after that they they invited 10 artists out of these 100 to do a big poster like an advertising poster which they then over a period of a year did randomly I mean it was a kind of it, it wasn't in my control or not, not, not even the curator's control, but it was from the people who basically did the advertising. They then placed that, and it was quite an exciting thing when you came or sometimes you arrived or you went somewhere and think, oh, there's my poster. Uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah, no, it was quite, um, you could impress people <laughs> with that actually. <laughs> I can remember when my mother came and we, she arrived in Heathrow and we went down and then she said, oh, it's you, and because it's such a different setting, you don't expect art in there or, or being next to the uh, an advert of Madonna or something like that. And then you, you suddenly realize how powerful these advertising posters in, in the public domain actually are and how much um, w whatever removed from that power actually, for instance, art is. Um, this is, uh, I just thought I'd show a few drawings of, <coughs> as well, projects or proposals. I mean, when in with these, with these site-specific or public art pieces, usually you have to make a proposal or very often it's a competition. Uh, you get tons, I mean, uh, uh, whatever, out of 100, probably 90 rejections and then 10% is working out. Uh <coughs> and lots of, I mean, I have kind of folders and folders of, of of, of work. Uh, this is one project, it would have been for the uh, Piccadilly, no, for the King's Cross site, the, for one tunnel there for them, and when they, when they redeveloped King's Cross, it's a project I didn't win, but uh, <coughs> I was, whatever, shortlisted in the end, but, but that was just a few drawings, so just to show you a few ideas. Of yeah. It was a kind of site, one end of a tunnel, and that would have done, in, would have been done in enamel. This is another uh, project, and uh, one project which uh, got realized in the end, but uh, that was basically the proposal drawing. It was in the Ministry of Justice in London, uh, a project about, in, in the end, 53 wall paintings on all the landings of the, of the staircases. Now, <coughs> what you see here, what I proposed, I mean, was uh, one pattern going through the building. There is where they're all kind of similar, but none is really repeating itself. 
and uh, one of these towers here is basically that is I mean one of the staircases <coughs> so all the four staircases got one distinct color scheme that is then as well some <coughs> some kind of proposal drawing And that is one of the results. I mean, I'm not showing them all, all of them, but uh, there. Then, then, then again. I mean, I mean, when I did that and proposed it, then uh, there came at some point that shock moment. Oh, they're going some lights on top of that. <coughs> and uh, <laughs> but and uh, and then as well, working with the with the deadlines. And um, I mean, that was a project I worked with around uh, ten assistants for four weeks. And it's quite a massive thing to organize. And that, uh, th 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 that's what I meant at the beginning. I, after a project like this, I'm always really longing to be in my studio and just do small drawings. And it's a quite a relief afterwards just to wa have a pencil and a, a four, four sheet of paper and just to think I don't have to justify now anything. Um, but uh, I mean, <coughs> I, I personally, I, I do always quite like these changes, like here, what, when I look at it now, I really love these two la lamps and that 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 funny. I think it was a kind of um, what is it called a loudspeaker where they have some some announcement because <laughs> it's becoming. I mean, for me, these these works. I mean, I, on one hand, I'm coming from a very pure abstract language, uh, uh, but then combining that with something which is real or, or some elements which are just there in, in, in a space, it's often becoming something a bit more <coughs> jolly or something, or it's, or it's changing its character. And, it's, it's, and, and, and I found that, I mean, in my, my foul, whatever, how, how I see the world, it's a kind of constant, constant move or, 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 or juxtaposition of, of something which is really poor, a, a pure, which is very, very much in, in, in my head and abstract, and then the reality of a space. And I never, I mean, with these, with these projects, I never really completely changed the space. So I'm always kind, kind of taking what is there and then collaborating in some way with the space so that, that, the, that the piece becomes something unique for it. It's just one of the other color schemes. That's another uh, project I did, an example where I worked together with architects. I did the color scheme for the Arts Council offices, <coughs> uh, which was a refurbishment project of an old building with Caruso Sinjon. Uh, I mean, they, they got the job, and then they invited me as an, as an artist to do the color concept. Uh, where I, which was quite difficult to start with, to to decide what I what I should do because it was a seven-story building, and they had their clear ideas, and then I came in, and I, it's too much. I don't explain the whole project, but I I made a, a abstract model, or I made a model of an abstract space like like where where all colors were, and then we tried to I tried to put this abstract model slowly into the space, which meant that some rooms that uh, got, got just one, one color, <coughs> other rooms had a kind of more distinct shape as well in it. And what was, what was specific with that project and different to lots of others was that it wasn't, and I wanted that there is not one room where you would say there is a wall painting of Lota or so. <coughs> it was very clear that the, the work should be completely integrated and I mean, if you see one room, you might see it's whatever, it's a color, it's a painter's and decorator's job or so. Uh, but the, it was a kind of abstract idea of, of, of a painting, of an abstract painting, which is basically scattered around the building, but nowhere you would actually see it. So these were four meetings rooms, just with one strong color on the walls, quite distinct from each other. Then that was um, the boardroom. Remember, there were two boardrooms, and then the idea was in the boardroom to bring all the colors together. Uh, we had <coughs> we had these seven floors. I think there was eight. I think there was a basement as well. It was then eight in total, <coughs> and every floor had one specific wall, which was the the, the indicating wall, or the basically that was the the color of that floor, uh, and. 
then in, in every floor was a kind of bitter theme uh, of color. Uh, and then in the boardrooms, I, I just put them all together, like whatever, I mean, conceptually, like, like the idea to bring all the ideas of a building and a big institution together in the boardroom. That was in the other boardroom. That is a, a project I did for, with Vital Arts <coughs> for Bath's Hospital, again in London, uh, which, were, uh, which is printed on a, on, a, on a huge banner where they had to cover again that, that site. I mean, that shape of that site was given <coughs> because there was a, was a practical reason. They had to cover that for, for some building work behind and then it was up for five years while they did their, their job. They, they renovated, they, they built basically a new, new tract, a, a new addition to the hospital behind that. Um, and there, <coughs> I mean, I don't know if it's that visible. I mean, I, I used, used all the architectural features of the adjacent buildings to basically divide, to, to divide the shapes or, or to, to create the shapes in the, on, that, on that small, tall bit and then line them up. And this is basically that, that form than, than, than the actual here diagonal shapes. That's uh, one project probably a few of you uh, know. I mean, that is in uh, <coughs> a Haymarket metro station in Newcastle. Uh, again, a project which I did in collaboration with the, with the architects. That was one, one, one project where I got called in very late. Lots of things, I mean, what the architects had proposed at the time was that to have the whole station just white, and then I think it was Nexus who suddenly didn't want that, and then they said, oh, can we get some color or so, and then they, they brought me in. And what I did then <coughs> was um, using things which are in, these, in the tunnels, I mean, from, from the, I mean, and where you see the red alarm sign, basically everywhere where there was a sign, I just um, used one color and made a whole, whole uh, ribbon, uh, I mean, round the, 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 the tunnel. Um, these ribbons were then the given color, and on the, on the top then here, I mathematically, I measured out how much color I've used, I mean, in percentage from, from each color, and then I mixed them up here like a bit like, a, like you would mix up a puzzle, but, but the percentage of the color was, it was an exact representation of what is downstairs. Again, a project which was with massive restrictions of what you could do, I mean, in terms of color, in terms of shape, the material was given, and then it's a very different way of working when you have to take that into account. That's just another. This is a project here in the building, uh, in the uh, galleries. It there was a show a few years ago, a few, a few years ago called Remake Remodel, <coughs> uh, which was uh, created by Matthew Hearn, and he. Uh, what I did there was the was the color of the walls. Um, it is that that is a I mean something which is again different because I had to come up with something. It's a kind of exhibition design on one hand. On the other hand, it's an abstract painting. So I try to find a way around to to create something where my colors kind of disappear. I mean on and do do make a background for the work, influenced the work, but the work influenced my piece as well. Um, and it was quite interesting, we, we can't see that on here now, how it looked without any work in it. It was a very, very different abstract painting, but then with the work, it created more these moods of, of atmospheres for the work. That's a, a, a project I did in, in uh, Guangzhou in China. <coughs> it was, a, was, was for a temporary project in a, a old communist theater place there where they didn't, they, I mean, they gave me as well a brief where they said, we have to, we want something which makes us able to use the space in a different way, like just that massive theater so that we can divide it. So I then did this, came up with the idea for these curtains where you could kind of close, up, close off sections, but 
wanted the curtains in a way so that you can always have the feeling that there is the whole space underneath. Uh, so, so, I mean, they did then, I mean, I don't know how long that was up, I think for a year or so, and then they could either close these curtains or they could as well open them completely at the opening night. We showed a film uh, and you could create a very different, different piece. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you imagine that yellow is now going going through, then suddenly that's closed off and it's a, it's a kind of different uh, painting in space. It worked as well quite with the atmosphere of the, of, of the whole hall. I'll just go through that now. Don't want to. Another um, a public art commission uh, at Westminster College, um, a building, a, a newly built, built a college building from Schmidthammer Lassner, Danish practice. <coughs> Again, a competition situation where you had to come with a proposal. Uh, and uh, I did that wall painting behind reception. Um, yeah, this, the idea was was there to have something. I mean, which which I mean, the the, the material of the whole space was very very pure with with concrete and that um, color. I mean, it's like a color. But, 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 center or something. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, one example of, I mean, I got quite a few times asked because of my wall painting practice for exhibitions. This is now slightly off the route, in the, but I think I included, I wanted to include it as well. Uh, <coughs> it's a work where uh, a curator that was at Smart Projects based in Amsterdam and the curator had the idea to have where, where a few artists were invited to set the scene and then there were other artists invited a week later and then they responded. Uh, so I was one of the, 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 the set the scene artists and I did um, three wall paintings. Uh, I mean, in this space, I did these lozenge and shapes around the three walls <coughs> and then later that one then that artist came and put the wallpaper in and uh, and then one came and sprayed and what you don't see now on the on this photo is that what was what was i mean that through that spraying the whole work had a kind of spray layer which um was quite interesting because i mean that, where I think it's a bit like what happened in public art space something it looks really and someone just puts a chair in front of it or something comes in and said, oh, did you not know? And then you think, oh, my God. <clears throat> and then you have this and you have to kind of think then that and, and adapt. And it was there the same as well. Where I thought it was clear the second row, of, let's say the second row of artists, they were allowed to do whatever they want. And then I thought, what if he's spraying it all my work over? And there was this kind of, there's, I mean, it's, it's quite often then a question when you are in a setting like this, how much do you allow your work to change or how, how much do you want to have control? And I, I can remember I had there a, 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 a bit of fit where I thought, oh, uh, but then uh, in the end, I really liked the result. That was, again, I mean, I did the wall and then the other artists that came in and then they responded and, and then uh, closed the windows and did, did then a shape in response to that. And then, of course, that has completely changed how you, how you, how you see at the, at the yellow and there was a, a pink here and the pink. That's one um, <coughs> piece I did for chapter in Cardiff. I had there, this is probably around four years ago, I had a, a solo show there and they have this kind of big glass wall in front of the front of the entrance where they invite people to do uh, something i mean this is done in vinyl it's printed but the the challenge there was that it had to work from both sides now we had to test out lots of i mean i had this idea of really full color that then obviously didn't work because it had to be in a way so from the back i mean behind that that glass wall, there is the foyer of the theater space, so I had to work both, both ways. Um, 
and uh, I mean the title of that work. I mean, I, I do actually title lots of works. I mean, I did not now go into into titles because uh, sometimes they are not that important. Here it was then it had quite uh, it 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 was quite related to the site of of chapter, which is one of these cultural center. I mean, where they have a theater space, a, a cinema, and a, um, a com communal art space and a gallery, and it was called Stage Fright. One work I did in Hanover for the uh, Kunstverein, where they, again, a, a competition situation where they invited four people to come with a proposal for that staircase, which they, which they, where they always invite someone to do some a project, and this is there for one one year, um, and they treat it as an exhibition space, but it is their main staircase. And I mean, with these spaces, I always try to, or with these works, uh, these um, architecture-related works, I, I mean, for me, it's very important not only to work from photographs, but I always go to the space, and I always spend quite a few days, and sometimes even longer, and try to find something in the space which triggers a work, or where I think, oh, they, I mean, the, the dimensions, or there, all the lines here, for instance, all the triangles are, I mean, I, my intention was not I want to make a work with triangles, but they, the, 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 I, I just simply connected points from, from the space and then ended up with these triangles. Um, and I mean, and in, in, in the process when I develop a work, it's always the kind of balance between, of course, I mean, I have in some way an abstract, that's clear. I have a certain language, how I apply paint. You probably have as well <coughs> a priority, or you have a color scheme, what you use very often. Um, but then I always want, I mean, I, for me, it's quite important that I try to get rid, I mean, when, I, when I'm designing a new piece, basically the hardest bit is to get rid of previous ideas and to start something which is really truly related to the space, uh, even if it's then in the end I mean, in a general static thing, looks similar to the previous one. I think there is a big difference in the approach if you say, this is my work, and now I have to change the space and to make the space so that that fits in. There, I mean, there are practices of people who work like that. that and, but then uh, it is different if you, if you think, I want the space to tell me a little bit what I should do or really have an influence. And that, I mean, with these, with these, uh, with these lines, I mean, I, I was then self surprised myself when I came up with that design. But, uh, that is a, 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 a smallish uh, hospital, uh, a, a mental hospital outside of Norwich, where I did something, I mean, there it was more uh, doing a kind of abstracted landscape. We were, of course, we had all these views. It's a, it's a mental health unit and basically a closed unit. Uh, and it was quite clear that I wanted to respond to the garden. <coughs> I mean, again, they're, they're, this is why I put these two examples together. They are, in some way, they're aesthetically quite similar, but in both, I, I believe that it was kind of the, the actual environment and the space which, which made me then really choose the actual uh, shape of the, or, or color of the, for the wall painting. These were five wall paintings. Um, here, you, yeah, I just brought that in so that you see a bit the, the environment. And the main one was, was that in, the, in, the, in, the, in their dining space. I haven't chosen the, st the chairs, they're horrible. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, they promised me they're grey, but they were obviously not. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was the kind of, I mean, it was a response to that. I mean, they had to, and all these communities, as they opened that, that space into the into the ceiling, and then it was kind of zigzag going down. And these are some of the most recent um, uh, public public works. That this was for la last year's Love Festival at the South Bank in the Royal Festival Hall. I mean, they do always in some of these uh, festivals, and they commissioned the seven. I mean, uh, the seven colors of love. So the the first task was basically. I mean, again, a, a competition. It was. I mean, to come up with a, with an idea for the. I mean, for that whole festival. I mean, a 
and the and the colors and I I, I, I did the seven colors of, of love which they I gave them to the design department they did whatever with them uh, but then we they, they commissioned that big floor piece for the claw ballroom where I used these seven colors and it's a <coughs> it's a piece which is all circles kind of reminiscent to all the dancers and they're coming together and I mean I mean these they because they they had this these weekends which which always had a theme I mean every color was one certain form of laugh uh, and and that was in a very simple abstract way a kind of symbol for get them all together um, and then we, we we did these benches as well which were going along with their with their with the circles And that's vinyl on floor. It was a quite a nightmare to get it produced. And right, I mean, <coughs> I had there as well sleepless nights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that then was outside again. The seven, these, the seven colours. There's a big banner in, I mean, in, uh, at the at the entrance of the Queen Elizabeth Hall. And then, uh, and in the in the uh, Queen Elizabeth Hall foyer. Um, they 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 commissioned this 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 piece for the uh, I mean I mean there, there there was the exhibition which showed I mean you see that here that, that blue blue thing that that, that it, it, it was a sh the, the the space where they explained the whole exhibition and and then they they wanted something on these windows where I wanted to do something where you where you don't block the view but you do something with the view and again which works both sides I mean I was there I mean. Interested that how how uh, how how these windows are changing when we look outside and they are changing the inside, <coughs> and in the in the evening at around I mean between six and eight main the main time when it was full when the sun was hitting these everybody inside got really color colorful and and I mean got reflected in on on the people and this is vinyl <coughs> on glass. <clears throat> probably the absolute horror of real glass people. <laughs> kind of that's the trash version of <laughs> of <laughs> using. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, these are temporary projects and for festivals. And it's again, it's something when you work as an abstract painter, basically, it's sometimes when, when you when you then do something for, let's say, a situation where you know, oh, there it's as well about fun or it's something. It's not that that. By so-called high art series exhibition situation, you 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 have to find ways. I mean, how does that? Does it work or does it not work? I mean, how how do I want the, want the work to be seen as as popular culture? Is that okay or is it not? Or in, in which way can it be influenced? And then the top was that we that they asked me if they, they can use it as well underneath there that design. I, I, I made at some point this design. I mean, that, that was. Uh, uh, just show that again. Uh, th that was an abstract um, idea for 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 one banner, and then someone just I mean in 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 in, in the process of what what do we do and uh, quite like that, and then asked, oh, could we do that as the banner? And uh, um, then then I said, yeah, okay. Uh, I gave it then the idea to the design department. They said, oh yeah, we could we could probably have the have the bar as well. I mean, <clears throat> if you if you show that now, for instance, uh, in a in a context of a really serious classic abstract art, it is it could be the kind of horror. But uh, I I really like this kind of uh, juxtapositions or these 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 kind of crossing boundaries, or as well to see in which way. I mean, I mean, I do enjoy there as well. Even I mean, the, this mixture between having a beer and an intellectual context. Okay, that that is it. I think that is it. Yeah. I just stand now. <laughs> yeah. How do you choose your color combinations? Well, it it depends a bit. I mean, uh, over the years, of course, you realize that you probably have a kind of palette. That is one thing. But then, I mean, it depends. I mean, with these projects, which 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 are in a in a, in, a, in a social or in a, in a in a spatial architectural context, I often try to find something 
um, which is probably the starting point. Because of course you could start with any color. <coughs> and you could as well fall through or, or probably justify, say, I do this color because of this reason or that reason. But quite often I, I have a, the, the first start is a kind of conceptual approach where I probably try to find one, one color which is quite linked to that space. Uh, and then, then there is there is this second phase which usually happens in my studio where I kind of, I'm then acting there, I would say like a, like a painter who's interested in color and there is not for every choice a reason. I mean, I then probably just think that looks nice, I love that or I, I just I have a pink and then I want a green next to that uh, and I mean I always stress out as well that these kind of interventions are very much a personal <coughs> intervention it's not about right or wrong it's not about saying this this I mean because I had their discussions with people where they where they might say oh in if I if I follow up a, 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 a conventional color theory this is probably wrong uh, but I'm not really interested in that. It's a kind of mood as well often when, when I think, yeah, I mean, for that space, I, if, I, if I choose a yellow, then I think, yeah, then I want a red against that. Um, but sometimes I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how, like, over the years of your practice, how much easier is it now to access a color palette? you know, for your external walls. Because I, be I would believe that it would be quite difficult to get some of your purples and and greens and oranges, you know, when you started. You mean to get them physically as a paint? Yes, physically as a paint. Um, it is easier now, yes. It, it wasn't that difficult, but um, you mean to get it manufactured or to, yeah. get, to get the actual the color? Um, yeah, that has changed. I mean, there were, when I started, there were some colors really, really difficult, but it was more the material because they've changed the formulas, how they do paint. And some like dark purples were a complete nightmare to paint. And you could, actually some colors you couldn't use because they were too sensitive. And they, they now you can use them and they are more, I mean, I'm talking there about paint in the public context when you would paint that wall. You cannot do that. I mean, let's say I, I would paint that wall. I mean, you have to take into account someone is touching that and you cannot just use any paint because it will probably look nice for a week and then it looks completely horrible. Um, so these are one of these practical things, but they've changed their some formulas and that made it much more easy. And do you think that your art in the public space really influenced people's color palette at home? Well, uh, I get lots of reactions from people where they say, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I think so. I mean, I don't know exactly, but, but people often, they, I mean, I mean, many people do respond quite directly to colour. I mean, it was particularly there in that, that, that space in the, in the South Bank Centre, that floor piece. I mean, I went there a few times and, I mean, for, I mean mainly, for instance, children, it's kind of extreme. They run into colour. <laughs> and they were just lying on these colours. And I stopped this way, I think, mm. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Sorry. Um, actually, I've got two. Um, one is, um, your work seems to be quite linear, straight-edge, with the exception of the ball on the floor. Is there a reason why you tend to go for more geometric shapes? Um, well, there are, I mean, I mean, Jim, <laughs> One reason possibly really is that I'm, I love geometric shapes and, and, and my, um, I mean the, the start from the interest in architecture was kind of started with modernist architecture. So probably I am there a bit like uh, a rectangular person. <coughs> but um, it's, it's some, I mean, but some of the thing, some of the shapes, I, I mean, I realized then when I did, for instance, drawings or when I work independently from a space, I use lots of circular spaces and lots of completely different shapes. Uh, and I think a lot had to do with that, I mean, specifically in the early projects that I really tried to respond to, to the, to the, 
architectural physicality to the to to forms I found there. And I've I mean I mean I was with early projects I I have not even shown images now when I was for instance when I, when I, at the time when I was at the Royal College and just the first years after that. I I set myself lots myself lots of restrictions and very often use something. I mean, my way to to respond to a space was that I had to find something, and there I just realized that most spaces have whatever rectangular. I mean, they are, they they are, they have 90 degree. They have they have verticals and horizontals, and very not very often something else or the spaces. And I think it came a bit from that as well. Um, I mean, I do, I have done quite a few projects where I have as well, I mean, circle and other uh, um, elements. And so it's not, it's not something where I say there is no, there's no message behind that. I mean, it's not like, I mean, I mean, I think, I mean, yeah, I mean, I got that question quite a few times where I say, where, where does that actually come from? And I mean, with this, with the site specific work, it is partly because of the nature of most spaces, I mean, of course, you have now architecture, which is all blobby and blurry. I mean, like the, 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 the I mean, with the, with the new technology. I mean, like buildings of Tsar Hadid or the, the, the Sage in, in, in Newcastle, or even, I mean, I mean, here this has curves, but very often a, the classical gallery space didn't have that, and I think that had, was as well one, one, one reason. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of I mean, for me, I mean, this is again, I mean, this is what I've showed here now is, is a further selection from the site-specific works. I mean, the, I mean let, let's say the, I mean, some of the works I did in gallery spaces or in museum spaces are quite different and probably something in between these drawings and that. <coughs> I mean, like, for instance, this, I mean, for the South Bank Center, uh, or, or or some other spaces. I wanted the work. The, the reason was not. I I, I mean, I deliberately didn't want. It wasn't about the work itself. I wanted to change an environment, and I think it's far less really as a piece. <coughs> but it's like, like like as well that 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 old people's restroom. If I think about that. Uh, I hardly think about the result. The result basically comes out of a, an intervention. On, I did as well pieces, which are now probably not in that, that um, presentation, where the work was hardly visible, where I really literally only painted a wall pink and another wall light blue. <coughs> and the work itself was in the way how that changed the behavior of the people in that space. Uh, so there is a big difference. Uh, but particularly these ones are works where, where I had lots of restrictions as well, or where I then, I mean, like, like here where you had to do something and it has to stand out and work where there are thousands and thousands of people. And I think it influences your practice or you do different things. I mean, something like these line drawings, I was recently thinking about there somewhere I thought, oh, as a big wall painting, what could one do there? Or would and I would be interested, but it is, I mean, it's it's a, it would be an enormous time spent. I mean, if you imagine one of these drawings, then I mean, sometimes these walls or things I do are, let's say, 20 meters long, and then uh, some things as well, restrictions and budgets. I mean, if you, for instance, it has an influence. If you are on your own and you know I have four days or five. You cannot do everything. That's impossible. If you, if you have the sources to employ ten people, you already can do something different. <coughs> and I must admit that these practicalities are influencing your or my decision making. Uh, sometimes I'm there quite surprised how it does that because uh, it might be that that they that someone says, "Oh, Lothar, you can do something there," and it's a massive space. And my first moment is just horror because I think, 
<laughs> oh my god, uh, <clears throat> I, I can just see the stress and the pain and everything. But if they then say, and we give you 10 people <laughs> to do that, then I think, oh, and then <laughs> I can just see how my spirit lifts up and I get other ideas. And, the, and I at first always thought this is bad. But then over the years, I actually thought this is just reality. And I quite enjoy, I mean, as like you have restrictions with public art, I mean, when, like when they did something for the metro station and then they say, you can't use that color because this is the, 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 that's executive color of Nexus. You can't use red because the driver gets, uh, gets irritated. You can't use yellow, you can't use green. And then you suddenly think, so what do I do then? Um, but I, I do actually enjoy these restrictions and that you come up with a much simpler idea. But you are completely right. These drawings or so as an as a art piece in its own right work quite differently. And that, that's, that's a reason for that. Well, um, I think there, there was one. One more. One. Um, you work with some transparent or semi transparent spaces as well as those kind of solid walls. Do you approach them differently, or is it, is it kind of spatially different, or do you respond to that? surface in the same way? No, it is quite different. I mean, if you, if you think about, I mean, that, that, that one of the last pieces I showed, the, the glass, uh, it is, I think it's a, very, you, it's a very different way of working because it's different if you see what's behind. <coughs> and I mean, it's also a bit similar like that piece I did in Cardiff, <coughs> where, uh, I mean, if you do something that's on a solid piece, of wall, I mean, you you choose your color probably from the color palette, and then you know this is roughly what the color is. And in any transparent uh, surface, the kind of interaction with the light, what is behind everything, is completely is much stronger. It's very different. And I actually, I mean, I, 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 when I did the first projects, I can remember I did one project, and then all my color decisions were completely wrong. And I just when I saw the result, I thought oh my god, this is all wrong. And uh, because I didn't take into account that there is that behind and that it's actually transparent and you can see through or that some yellow is nearly invisible because it wasn't that yellow, that bright yellow any longer because it wasn't <laughs> on a white background. And that, no, no, it is, of course, very different. And, but, but there, for instance, there in the, in the, I mean, when I did the thing for the, for the, uh, at the at the South Bank cen Center, I particularly then decided to do to use material where this becomes a kind of quality. Where I thought I want that kind of half, and then that is always different. And these windows are not just the shape, but but that you can see the skyline there of London and uh, and the people outside, and that is changing. But because I mean, you have to take in account this immateriality. I mean that factor. I mean. I mean, in glasses, it's, it's completely, I mean, that is the great thing. I mean, in, 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 in church windows or so, I mean, I would love to do a church window or something like that. I mean, You're this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be grand. Well, on that note, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs>